Hello everybody and welcome to 2022. This evening we're going to talk about a very hot topic, an important topic in bank risk management and a recent topic, although the concept itself probably isn't that recent, and that's climate change risk management in banking. Climate change of course is something that is affecting the whole planet, but it has a particular impact in the banking and finance industry, which is why, as we're about to see, regulators have been pronouncing on this subject over the last couple of years. And so banks need to get up to speed on what they're doing in addressing climate change risk as it impacts them and their customers. OK, so five minutes on this topic and I'll be posting the slide separately, in a separate post as well, because there's quite a lot of text here. We're going to rush through in only a few minutes. OK, climate change. First of all, we're aware already that there's lots of risk exposures in a bank through its ordinary course of business, as you can see from there in front of you. But one of them now, which we're adding to this list in the last couple of years, is this one, climate change risk. It's something that uh, every bank needs to be uh, getting a hold of now. And as I said there on the slide, or as my friend Saburno Barrow has says, it's a multi-dimensional discipline. It impacts many parts of a bank and uh, it's, got, it's getting a high level attention from regulators and stakeholders alike. What have certain regulators been saying? Well, there's a quote right there from an executive director of supervision at the Bank of England. This is uh, over a year old now. It's a quote from 2020 from Sarah Breeden. And that makes it fairly clear what uh, the regulatory authorities think of this topic. And uh, leaving aside this statement per se, as I say there on slide, uh, it's clear that banks must address climate risk and climate change risk. That's specifically the expression I'm going to be used going forward, climate change risk. We've got to approach this from a multi-dimensional perspective uh, from the top policy and the risk framework, but also strategy around the policy, the tactical approach, how one is going to deal with customers, customer origination, product origination, and of course the all important balance sheet risk management angle of this topic. And uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, text and pronouncements being said around the world uh, on, this, uh, on this topic. That's what I've got down there, climate change risk agenda. Uh, we've got the, the regulatory compliance aspect of it, what the various regulators have been saying on this and which banks need to comply with. We've got market expectations. We've got what external customer or customers and stakeholders uh, would expect banks to be doing when addressing this topic. And we've also got what one might consider uh, or describe as a uh, silver lining in the cloud, which is the opportunities that arise. It's not just all about risk management. There's also business opportunities that may arise because of the changing landscape that we're now working our way through. Uh, first of all, we should address, before we get into the, the, the detail, uh, we should be aware that when we speak of climate change risk, there's two types of risk, two main types of risk that we're concerned with. One is, of course, the more obvious one, physical risk, uh, which is uh, the, the risk arising from uh, uh, environmental factors, weather factors because of climate change. So floods, for in increasing incidents, incidents of flood, forest fires, extreme weather events, uh, gla gradual changes like a rise in sea level. And then of course, so that, that's physical risk. And also there is the transition risk because in addressing the, the, the risks uh, posed by climate change, we see transition in various parts of the economy. Uh, we're moving to a new way of doing business, a new way of addressing what customers need, a new way of originating products, changes to products. So that's the transition risk as economies transition to a new way of doing things in certain aspects of, of their operation because of climate change. That's uh, there's a risk associated with that as well. And that's that's transition risk. And of course, so there is a firm specific reputation risk and balance sheet liability risk arising out of specific exposures that an individual bank may have. OK, uh, there's uh, there's just for your reference there on slide seven, there is more tone from the top um, where I've uh, just referenced where other regulators have pronounced on this. We've had publications from within the European Commission, uh, the UK PRA uh, has published on this. And in fact, I referenced that a bit later in this video, uh, Baffin in Germany, the Australian SEC in Singapore, Monetary Authority of Singapore, a number of regulators all around the world have published on this topic. So of course, in your local jurisdiction, you want to be familiar with what they have said. The Basel Committee, the Bank for International Settlements has also published last year, a, uh, uh, a paper on climate related financial risks and measurement methodologies, how, uh, how they suggest or their guidelines on how we're going to measure the risk exposures arising out of uh, climate change risk and addressing climate change. 
Now, here's an example, a specific example of regulated guidance. This one's from the UK Prudential Regulatory Authority. Uh, their guidance includes a supervisory statement from 2019, uh, which was called uh, Enhancing Banks and Insurers' Approaches to Managing the Financial Risk from Climate Change. So that's uh, obviously more than a couple of years now. Uh, in, in 2020, they had a Dear CEO letter to all bank CEOs about addressing this topic. And just... Uh, um, uh, last month was their date by which they expected compliance with their supervisory statement to be met by. The UK government has a 2050 target of net zero emissions. For those of you in the UK, I'll leave you to, to contemplate what you think of that. Right, what is the regulator expectation? Well, it, as I said at the start, it's multidimensional. There is, uh, th this is going to impact governance. It's going to impact the risk management framework and the risk management processes. It's going to impact your ICAP processes, your, your capital adequacy. It's going to impact, uh, as in, obviously, as if, it, if it's impacting ICAP, it's impacting your scenario analysis and stress testing. And there's also an element of pillar three disclosure. Uh, and um, in the UK, this has to be up to speed in terms of how the bank's addressing it by the end of last month, December 2021. In your own jurisdiction, you'll want to check what the deadline is for meeting enhanced uh, guidance or a disclosure and, and, and new re regulatory compliance requirements uh, as a result of uh, climate change risk exposure. If we're responding to uh, supervision guidance, this guidance that I've just given an example of from the UK, uh, we should first and foremost uh, recognize what this means for our, what's our RMF, our risk management framework. What does this mean for our risk management framework? Climate change risk can be expected to impact market risk, credit risk, liquidity risk, operational risk, and also, uh, as important, reputational risk. So in other words, a number of different existing risk types um, may well be impacted, in some cases significantly, because uh, as a result of climate change and what that means for financial markets. And something we should also bear in mind uh, addressing climate change risk needs to be within the framework of the existing three lines of defense model. Okay, now I've got um, humbly uh, my, uh, my own suggested nine part climate change risk management approach uh, and how one would go about embedding that in your risk management framework. Obviously, so nine parts or nine segments. Uh, there's a lot more detail that one could go into in this. I've summarized that uh, on slide 13 there. Do have a look at that when you download these these slides and there's other material that could build this out that I may present at a later point. But as you can see, there's nine. Uh, there's a nine part approach to addressing climate change risk that you might want to consider when updating your risk management framework to incorporate what the bank is doing uh, with respect to climate change risk management. As I mentioned earlier, climate change risk management will impact your ICAP process, your capital adequacy process. So again, it needs to be incorporated within the stress testing framework that the bank is using when it's conducting or undertaking its ICAP. And again, I've written down on slide 14, uh, six pointers on how that might uh, might be expected to impact the ICAP process. The acronym RAF there doesn't mean Royal Air Force. Of course, that's the risk appetite framework. You'll need to update that. And I've got an example of that to show you. In a second, the business as usual risk appetite statement daily MI. Here's a hypothetical example there, the hypothetical Chowdhury Bank, if you like. So you would incorporate within your risk appetite statement key risk indicators that would measure climate change risk exposure. So I've got a sample there on slide 16. That's a work in progress. If you look at the top right, I've written work in progress there because uh, there are there may, there may well be more key risk indicators that we're going to add to this risk appetite statement. Uh, to, and which, which we're going to incorporate and calibrate in terms of exposure and appetite so we get a good grip on what climate change uh, risk exposure at any one time is for our bank in question. Okay, well, that's a whistle-stop tour through uh, climate change risk and what it means. Uh, there's a number of aspects to it, as I mentioned. First, there's the physical and the transition risks. And then secondly, there's the regulatory compliance element. And thirdly, there is the what does this mean for a bank's risk management framework and risk appetite statement. OK, so from a banking perspective, from your bank's perspective, we wish to understand the external environment. We need to understand regulatory requirements. And then we need to understand what this means for our risk management framework. We also need to understand what this means for our business going forward in terms of products, how we address the customer perception, stakeholder requirements. Uh, customers like to see banks also 
getting engaged in this space. Uh, the ESG acronym there, of course, environmental sustainability. Uh, that's an important aspect of all of this as well. Okay, great. Now, I haven't got a reference on this one, so I'm going to uh, reference later on uh, where I'll be dealing with this subject in the second edition of Principles of Banking. But I will see you again soon in another video. And this is a topic that, of course, is only going to get bigger and bigger. So as risk managers, whether we work in Treasury or finance or, or, or risk, or indeed in the first line of defence um, within the business lines, we need to have a good think about what this means uh, for the bank's policy on climate change, its risk management framework, and indeed how it uh, it engages with its customer franchise. Great. Thanks very much for listening. I will see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.